Hello, PyCon Taiwan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, good morning and welcome to our talk. One does not simply create a lasting tech community. Our 10-year journey through the joys and challenges of building an, an impa impact, impactful and fulfilling community. So, my name is uh, Matt Lebrun. I'm Micaela Reyes. And we're both software engineers from Manila, Philippines. And we're also uh, the organizers of PyCon Philippines. And um, we're happy to be here. Okay. And also a fun fact, this is one of our favorite dishes, Xiaolongbao. Uh, it, we eat it a lot in Manila. <laughs> um, so today, uh, we hope to share some of the things we learned that made our community thrive and last. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's start uh, by uh, sharing with you what the Python community as a whole <laughs> means to us and why it matters. So it all started uh, when we attended our very first PyCon in the Philippines, which was not organized by us, it was organized by someone else. Uh, that's us in the picture, encircled. Um, the experience was so inspiring that we decided to dive into Python and have been an advocate for it ever since. Let me tell you why. Um, the feeling was like this, uh, it was like, we had a PyCon hangover after because we met a lot of like-minded folks and felt like anything is possible and we could be ourselves. And then we just wanted more of it. The journey to building a Python community. So here are our personal experiences in building Python PH. So we organized our first few meetups and then had after meetup hangouts, I think uh, most of you can relate to this, after meetups you have after meetup hangouts. And then we did some sort of a toast to building uh, a formal entity. And then we organized our first uh, hackathon and then eventually incorporated uh, Python PH as a, as a nonprofit. So the second PyCon uh, in, in 2014 was actually the very first PyCon that we organized uh, as a formal incorporated entity. And these are also our first diversity, diversity initiatives, uh, Pi Ladies Manila, and then followed by Django Girls Manila. Uh, fostering diversity and inclusion. Um, let me ask you a question. Why do you think uh, uh, diversity and inclusion uh, matters? Um, for us, the role of the diversity and inclusion in building healthy and long-lasting Python communities provides a safe space and allows for ideas and people to flourish. But to do that, uh, we need to establish, we also need to establish a shared vision and a sense of purpose. So this is the purpose that's indicated in our articles of incorporation. Um, but uh, in, in uh, to, to make the, <laughs> the purpose relatable, uh, it's, it's this, to show that Python has something for everyone from hobbyists to educators to, edu to students and to professionals. And to inspire Filipinos to excel in their craft through Python and open source. And also to provide a safe space where the Python programming language and surrounding technologies can be explored, discussed, and exercised. All that because we believe that create creating small dents of improvement in the PH tech industry uh, in fosters environment that inspire and motivate individuals to, to be technically competent and be passionate about their craft. Um, so 
um, strategies for promoting diversity and inclusion. Number one is uh, what we call our pi-local initiatives. Um, uh, for context, uh, the Philippines is uh, is uh, not one huge uh, landmass. It's composed of 7,000 plus islands. So uh, the three major ones are Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Uh, the one colored in blue is Luzon, yellow is Visayas, and purple is Mindanao. <clears throat> so what happened was uh, we only organized a uh, PyCon uh, at the beginning, in the yellow, uh, in the blue part, Luzon, and then some of the attendees apparently came from Visayas and Mindanao, and then they got uh, after attending the conference, they got inspired to form their own meetup communities in their own areas, and then that's also when um, these are their names, by the way, the meetup groups, uh, and then that's also when they got the idea that. Uh, they want to co-organize uh, PyCon uh, in Cebu and then followed by CDO Cagayan de Oro in Mindanao. Number two, um, we also do partnerships with other tech communities for women-related advocacies and then uh, to promote uh, participation from students uh, and the academe, uh, especially researchers, uh, we do partnerships with uh, schools and school, school orgs. Um, so today, uh, oh, sorry. Throughout the years, we, we have volunteers coming in and dropping out. And for, every, for, for a very long time, most of the important leadership roles have been vacant, which also resulted to the existing leaders taking on multiple responsibilities and getting burned out. But um, the good news is uh, recent, just very recently, uh, I think we've achieved a significant milestone that we've converted uh, some core volunteers to uh, comrades. And uh, two core volunteers stepped up as PyCon chair in 2013 this year, just this year, and then for next year, uh, there's another one. Um, other core volunteers started to take leadership roles as well. Um, and we were also able to fund volunteers to attend PyCons in Asia and Pi Locals. Uh, in terms of diversity, there was a time when uh, we have nine board of trustees in in Python PH uh, from the beginning, but there was a time when I was the only woman in the board of trustees. Uh, but uh, recently, um, these are some of our uh, milestones. One board member came from one of the Pi local groups, and uh, now we have six women and three men. So, but all these amazing things did not come without blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Despite the abundance of positive outcomes, community stewards often face challenges such as burnout and succession planning. So the question remains, how do we make this good thing last? Matt is going to share the story. Hello, everyone. So, um... Part of the part of our journey was trying to figure out how do we balance, uh, create a more holistic sense of balance for our core volunteers as well as for ourselves. So the ebbs and flows of volunteering. So why do we? Uh, why do people volunteer? So why do we volunteer? So for many. Uh, it's the profound sense of purpose that guides us. It's about creating an impact greater than ourselves. This community is more than just a group. It can also be a family united by an innate desire to belong and keep improving. 
However, this dedication often treads a fine line balancing work, life, and community. Our personal and professional lives get overshadowed by volunteering commitments. Sometimes it's the other way around. Um, passion, when unchecked, can also lead to burnout. Um, and, for, and for some, volunteering just stops making sense and, and then they move on to other things. Um, so from just to just a little backstory there, um, originally um, when we founded Python Philippines, there were like nine people uh, from that group. Now most of most of them, like since it's been like ten years, uh, they've already moved on and did other things. So it's just from from the founding group, it's just me, Mickey, and and Sony. He's he's not here. Um, so from so throughout this journey, what we've realized was that our most vital resources as community uh, as a community organization is that um, our passion and our time. And the challenge lied in channeling our passion sustainably and also valuing the time that our volunteers invest. So how how do we how did we manage the passion and the time uh, of our volunteers so that we can still drive the goals of the community? So, uh, so we've really focused on quality over quantity. So it, it's easy to get lost with all the invitations to host frequent events our activities and companies want to do partnerships. Um, however, our focus has always been delivering quality and keeping true to our mission. So we don't always, uh, eventually we learn to say no to partnerships that would pull us away from what our mission really is. And then there's always the boring stuff to work on. So managing behind the scenes work is as crucial as our front facing activities like PyCon or meetups. So there are always this mundane administrative tasks that can pull away the focus from what really matters. So what we did was we outsourced uh, those tasks so that we can concentrate on our community. Outsourcing, like we um, we engaged with a third party company to manage the paperwork for our taxes and all those government compliances. Uh, we also make sure that we document all things. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's an evolving document. Uh, it helps uh, those newcomers to understand our procedures and it ensures consistency. We also have uh, more experienced volunteers partner with the newcomers. And it's um, and a, fun, a fun thing that that uh, allows is that it also forms new friendships within the volunteer circle. So our community is built on passion, but to nurture it, we need structured respect for time of everyone. So what, what we've learned is that we need, uh, we need to recognize two sets of volunteers. We have our core volunteers and our seasonal volunteers. So the core volunteers are our constant pillar, while seasonal volunteers, these are usually volunteers that just come in during PyCons or big events, uh, they bring in the right amount of help on those right time. And then if people feel that, you know, like sometimes life happens or sometimes people are just tired or they feel burnt out, uh, we recognize this and we encourage them to just take a leave of absence and take a step back. Um, yeah. And also sometimes you also get volunteers who would commit to certain things and then they 
just don't proceed, like they don't deliver. So this also affects the morale of the other volunteers. So we need, uh, we also, it's a hard thing to do, but we talk to them um, and sometimes we and just encourage them to just become seasonal volunteers instead of being a core volunteer um, that we typically rely on. It's tough, but it's also necessary. And then as a volunteer group, usually uh, people have these, all these great ideas. They want to do something. They want to hold an event. Uh, they also want to uh, partner with certain companies uh, or, or do things differently. But from our experience, like usually like they just uh, don't, com don't follow through with those ideas. And it would just take time away from other volunteers who actually want to do something else. So what we did is we encourage everyone to um, champion their own ideas and lead by example, like try to do it first. And then if, um, if people, if the others see that you're committed towards really seeing your ideas through, and then, and then that becomes like part of the main program that we provide to the community. And then always have a backup for your backup. So ultimately, like things always happen, right? So unforeseen challenges will always arise. Here's what we do. We always, uh, we identify the bare minimum. So what's the least we can do to keep the community alive and thriving? And this isn't about settling. It's about being resilient. And then we also embrace pause. So sometimes the best action is inaction. Taking a break can offer clarity and renewed energy. So just to give, uh, just also to share this story, like in 2019, uh, we held our last uh, PyCon for that period. And then we took a break. Uh, the idea was just to take a one year break from organizing PyCon, like we will not be holding like a uh, PyCon 2020. But then, you know, like pandemic happened. And so the break actually got extended a little bit longer. And then we got back in 2023 instead. So, so that was like, a, 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 I don't know, I don't know. It felt like the universe was telling us to really take a break anyhow. Like all the administrative work got piled up to a few set of volunteers. So we were, we were able to work on those things during that time. And then we have what we call our nucleus volunteer volunteers. So these are the our unsung heroes in a way. Like these are the people who who step uh, when others when the other volunteers take a step back. You know, like with, with whatever ha is happening with their lives. These are the people that step up. They are always the ones who keep things together. Um, and um, and they ensure that their that our community community's heart keeps breathe uh, keeps beating. And what we've realized that um, managing the passion and time of everyone is more of an art and also part science. Uh, it's about strategic planning, yet also riding the wave when needed. And then, so one of the key problems of like being a 10 year uh, organization was that those who started the org usually have to keep being there. Like it's hard to find people who would take on your, uh, your, your sense of responsibility of keeping the community alive. So it was a problem that we have to kind of really think about. And so we've adopted the ethos, uh, the ethos of Kaizen. It's a term inspired by the Japanese philosophy of Kaizen, uh, which stands for continuous improvement. The added D is a nod to the Unix convention of demonized processes. 
it represents background operations that are always running in, in Unix systems. So essentially, Kaizen symbolizes a group of constantly working in the background dedicated to bettering themselves and the community. So Kaizen is more like a, how we call the core volunteers of uh, Python PH. At Kaizen's core is a deeply embedded culture. So we, we do team buildings. So team building is uh, an activity that we, foster, uh, that we uh, organize to foster bonds and ensures that everyone is a cohesive team and everyone knows each other and it creates friendship between the organizers. Um, and we always also uh, spot potential. We're always on the lookout for emerging talent and we recognize and nurture uh, their potential within our group. And then we also celebrate each other's individual inputs. And this, um, and acknowledging their contribution kind of, in, kind of uh, gives them a sense of uh, that their inputs are valued and, then, and that they are an important member of our community. And then one of the things that we've also started um, providing our members was the Continuous Improvement Fund. So every year uh, we allocate a certain amount uh, that, is, um, that is accessible to the core volunteers. And with this, they can use it, uh, they can request for whether they want to take a course or they take a certification or they wanna attend um, PyCons from, um, from abroad, or, or we also use this fund to send them to the other Py local groups. And then we also really thought deeply about what is, um, what are the smallest things that we can do that can drive the maximum results. Like, so it's not always about more is better. So with this, we form committees. So committees are these smaller groups that, um, uh, that ensures their responsibilities are always manageable. Right? And then we have a, we've also created this coaching or body system. This dual approach ensures that knowledge flows naturally and that members have someone to share their responsibility and accountability with. And then we try to expand the horizons of our volunteers. What we've noticed is that when volunteers participate in global PyCons and also PyLocal, if when they come back uh, to our country, they absorb fresh, perspe fresh perspectives. And then they also return with an amplified sense of ownership. They start feeling that, you know, that, that they are the people who actually represent our community. So they kind of like participate more and they take on, they, it encourages them to take more leadership roles. So in essence, Kaizen, the Kaizen approach is a perpetual journey of growth within Python PH. This ethos ensures that we aren't just producing followers, but cultivating a new generation of forward thinking leaders. Through Kaizen, we champion the idea that leadership is not a destination, but it's a continuous journey of evolution. Over the course of our 10 year journey building Python PH, there were moments when we'd ask ourselves, why do we shoulder these responsibilities? Is it all necessary? Every path we've taken has had its share of challenges and pain. Yet we consistently chose the ones that felt worth the struggle. Being amongst passionate and idealistic individuals has been more than just a privilege. It has been our driving force. The true fulfillment we discovered wasn't 
found in the tangible benefits that we received. Instead, it came from the positive changes that we could instill in someone else's life. We've come to understand that it's about the ripple effect of our actions. By passing on even the smallest good thing, we've witnessed how tiny ripples can transform into massive waves of change. In this journey, the reward hasn't been the external validations or, or the benefits. Rather, it was the transformation we've seen in ourselves. And more importantly, in the, in the transformation also reflected in, these, in this incredible community that we call home. So uh, with that, we thank you for listening and we hope you've shared uh, some thoughts and hopefully we've encouraged you to also try organizing and participating in the community as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Matt and Michi. And I think sustainability and the balance, personal balance is a common problem for all Python communities or even some volunteer driven events. So thank you. I'll share your experience and best practice, uh, like Ken said. And now let's see, uh, we ha uh, have some problems for, for you. Uh, the first is uh, from Wei. And the question is, how do you persuade co-volunteers to commend our non-co-volunteers to be co-core co ones? Um, uh, uh, how, do we how do we persuade or encourage core volunteers or non-con volunteers? Ah, okay, how do we? Okay, so Miki, do, do you want to answer I'm that? Fine. So, paano, paano natin sila na persuade maging core? Uh, it's it's a mix of a lot of things. Uh, like uh, if it's a really if, if it's a small responsibility, you just uh, like everyone you meet, you just try to become friendly, and then for some reason, uh, when they see uh, people uh, enjoying during PyCon, they they come to you and ask uh, how they can be part of it. But if it's a huge responsibility, like uh. Like becoming a PyCon chair, <laughs> uh, it's a it's a long. Uh, uh, since they're part of uh, Kaizen, uh, there are benefits uh, by uh, of be, be, being part of Kaizen, like the continuous improvement fund, and we also have a exclusive training pr program for uh, Kaizen members. <clears throat> but uh, if we're eyeing someone who has a uh, potential. Um, we we usually uh, uh, they probably don't know it, but now they know. Uh, we usually focus on that person and keep on uh, encouraging them. Uh, what, do you, uh, what? How do you say legal in in, in English? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, pin. Uh, focus on that person and. Uh, uh, and encourage them. And encourage them. Uh, for <laughs> there's this one joke that we do. Uh, we, we've been joking about it. Like uh, since last year, uh, before we asked someone to become beca become a PyCon chair, we we gave we, her a spa day, like a massage. <laughs> and then when she's all relaxed, that's when we asked her <laughs> if want she wanted to, to become a PyCon chair. <laughs> so that's one. <laughs> That's one way. Next year, people will avoid the massage. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, the next slide is uh, from takanori san and uh, the question is: What exactly does the coaching body system do? Okay, so the the coaching and the body system. So normally with um, with the volunteers, they don't know so uh, they don't know how to operate as you know like how. Like how to how to do things. So what the coaching body system do is that usually they set a time. Sometimes it's a video call or it's a coffee. They they go they go out to drink coffee and then they just like you know like talk. Um, uh, usually it's with an, a more experienced organizer, 
and then a new person. So they, they go out, they meet over a video call or they go out for coffee or drinks and then they just kind of like uh, talk to each other and then we'll just pick up from there. Um, one story is that uh, we have this, uh, the PyCon chair from last year, Allison. So she, she did a body system with uh, this person. Her name is Shara. So we were eyeing Shara to also become an officer um, for the org. So what they did is, it's, 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 it's funny. because So with Allison and Shara, they did this really nice body system together. They even set like our annual goals, like what do we want to do and achieve for this year? Together, we will be accountable for each other. Like they want to get fit. It's, sometimes these, these are things that are outside of doing organizing work. It's just personal improvement stuff that they want to be friends with or accountable with. It just creates that kind of like um, a nice cohesive um, system in a way. That's a lot of fun there. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is, uh, what will you do if you restart this community journey again? Oh, do you want to answer that? Like, uh, so, wait, does, does this mean that um, if you had to do it all over, if we go back 10 years, do, will we still do this? Or how would we approach it this time? Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> so, so when we started um, PyCon, uh, organizing PyCon, we were, I think our, we were like 26 years old that time. We were working already for maybe a few years. So what we noticed uh, at that period, we were working for the corporate, for our companies, and it felt pretty mundane and stagnant. Um, so we wanted to, we we wanted to have some meaning with what we be more than corporate slaves. Yeah, be more. Than, so so just a. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but <laughs> but when uh, when we when we first uh, organized. Uh, pi our Python meetups with the original organizers, we called ourselves the uh, kind of like a corporate slave anonymous group <laughs> of sorts. It's like people who, who, who are starting to look for meaning outside of the typical eight hour job that we have. So if we were to do this all over again, we would, we would still do it. And because um, it's, just that sense of fulfillment that we that we've had. So, what will so we'll still do the same thing. We'll find other people who are all, who are also in the same boat. Like, do you want some more meaning in your life? Then we'll just <laughs> we'll just do something together. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And next up is uh, how do you empower newcomers? Uh, how do you help to do their first task? Oh. We, uh, oh. Oh, yeah. uh, for it typically, uh, our the first uh, uh, step that uh, when 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 that uh, when new volunteers come is through PyCon. Um, we there usually there's a committee head for each committee, and that committee head is responsible for all the members of the committee. For example, uh. Logistics committee. Um, whoever is the chair is responsible uh, and acts like a big sister or older brother, uh, whether he's older or not, <laughs> to the members. And then there's also this uh, we have a core volunteers handbook and an organizer's manual for PyCon. So, yeah, that's uh, that are some of the people. Okay, uh, next question is, uh, how would you encourage people to share knowledge and idea in a community? And how to make their atmosphere where people are not afraid to share us, ask, continue? Um, would you like to answer that? Or? Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with answering. Okay. okay. So, so I think, uh, 
so, so the thing is, like, I, I think it's an Asian culture thing. Like, we don't typically um, express our thoughts to, you know, like, whenever, especially when you're, like, the youngest person in the, in the group. Uh, we're typically shy or we're just trained not to speak out to our elders. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so it's difficult, right? Um, but I think the, but it's more of a symptom of just, making everyone feel comfortable. And I think the Kaizen system that we created kind of um, kind of solved that in a way. So so when people feel that there are no um, well you will always have like your older brother and older sister within the org. But if you feel that you are actually um, peers or friends, um, you have the, you still have that respect to your uh, to your older brother older sister but you also f- feel comfortable expressing your thoughts because now you feel that you are also just having the best um, you, you just feel that uh, you are you have the uh, you have the best of the community in mind you're just thinking about the community and and how to um, so it's more of like Im- embedding this idea that we are working on something bigger than ourselves and and bigger than, you know, like, because I'm just young or whatever, like, it's it's beyond that. It's above that. So we so I think the Kaizen group, uh, the body system, um, the oh, th- those two main things, it kind of like gives them a sense of um, thinking of bigger things and that encouraged them, them to have new ideas also sending them to other PyCons and pi local as well so um, there's another one uh, um i think uh uh it, it's very important for us to <laughs> remind ourselves that uh we need to be the people that we needed uh when we were younger imagine what you needed that time yes uh what kind of guidance you needed and encouragement like when you're young you have a lot of imposter syndrome right uh um just try to go back to that point when you were younger and you needed someone to guide you don't forget about that and also uh, when, if you're older or uh, the more senior one allow the younger younger people to make fun of you <laughs> okay so and the, the next one is a little bit funny. Uh, so Kaizen, we pronounce as word Kaizen or Kaizen. I'm not sure maybe. Oh, it's it's the first one. It's yeah, it's like Kaizen, Kaizen with the end at the end. Oh. Okay. And the last one is how would you handle conflicts among volunteers, or how can you prevent them from happening? So the first one is uh, we fo- we all follow a code of conduct, right? Uh, and then uh, the other the other parts we had to learn the hard way because we we don't know how to have the conflicts before. Uh, but uh, most of that job is done by the board of trustees and uh, uh, like um, now uh, there's a core volunteers handbook. So I I think. Uh, once you have a lot of uh, people uh, championing what uh, what we what we value in the org, it's easier to handle conflicts. Yeah, you, you always have something to go back to. Like, okay, so this is how we should be treating each other if it's uh, if it's deviating from that, um, and then I guess we're not we're we're not. We're not doing things the, the way we, we wanted to do. So. And pro- probably remind them, uh, remind people uh, that uh, why, why we're doing this in the first place. Yeah. So. Okay, so last question I can see on our slide though, since we have already, uh, we still have plenty of minutes. Uh, uh, anyone want to ask question uh, in case uh, any of you can now use Slido. Any any question, you can use microphone in front of you. 
Any question? No? Okay, so before we uh, finish uh, this session, uh, I want to remind you we will have the next one is, uh, the last talk is talking about slide, slide ball. So if, if that sounds great to you, just don't go anywhere. So in the end, let's thank Mark and Mickey. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks for having us. <laughs>